I tune about a thousand pianos every year. So I've been doing it since I was about 18. Uh, that would be many, many thousands of pianos. Hi, my name is Ara Vatukian and I'm a piano technician. My job is to give the oral impression of being in tune rather than it being scientifically correct. As we go up into the top reaches of the piano, we tend to hear things flat. When we go down to the bottom, we tend to hear things sharp. As human beings, we tend to pull everything into the middle frequencies because that's where our speech is. So therefore, I had to then expand the treble and the bass more in order to make it sound correct. And this is where the technique or the art of tuning comes in as to how much I stretch either up or down to make it sound correct. In order to tune a piano, I first need a starting note. The starting note is A, which is tuned at 440 hertz. And I use a tuning fork or an app on my phone these days. I then start my first interval. So my first note would be A, and I go up a fourth to D. And when I'm tuning the D, I listen for the interference between the harmonics of the two notes. Harmonics are the tones that you hear on top of the basic note, which give the character of the sound. If it wasn't for the harmonics, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between a violin and a trumpet. The first harmonic, which is your bass note, if I play A, produces the second harmonic, an octave above. Third harmonic is a fifth above that, then a fourth, then a major third, then a minor third. So those are the first six harmonics of A. Now if I was to play the D, which is a fourth above, you'll notice that the, the third harmonic of D is the same as the fourth harmonic of A. So when I'm playing those two notes, I'm actually listening to... So if I hold those two down and go... I'm listening to the beat rate in that harmonic. So I adjust the beat in that interval in order to coincide with the amount of out of tuneness that I'm looking for. Unfortunately, pure harmonics repeated by themselves will not fit into an octave. When we're tuning, we have to temper the scale. By tempering, we mean changing the width of the intervals in order for them to fit within the octave. We now tune mostly in equal temperament. Equal temperament is the mathematical division of the octave into 12 equal parts. In order to get those notes equally spaced, we need to move the other intervals quite considerably. For example, there are four minor thirds in an octave and there are three major thirds in an octave. So I've just tuned four minor thirds, the bottom note and the top note are the same, they're an octave apart. I'm going to do the same thing with the major thirds, so three major thirds. I end up with a note which is almost half a semitone difference between three major thirds and four minor thirds. So if I play them together, they're quite out of tune. In equal temperament, we make all the intervals slightly out of tune equally so that they all fit into the octave and have an equal sound. There are three strings to every note in the piano. I can't tune all three at once, so I'm muting the outside two. I'm tuning the middle one first, and then I'll go back and tune the outside two to, to be the same as the middle one. Of course, the most important thing is the tuning hammer or tuning lever. It's correctly a lever, it's not a hammer because we don't use it to bash things with. That goes onto the pin. The tuning pins have a torque of over 130 kilograms. So I'm moving very slight amounts in order to move a large amount. Unlike a guitar where you can make fine adjustments, you can't do that with a piano. So the first one I tune is the A to D which is a fourth, so I make that two hundredths of a semitone wide. The next one is I'm tuning is the, I go down to G, and I'm making that one two hundredths of a semitone narrow. I 
I'm going through the circle of fifths now and tuning all the intervals in that order. Because the string is quite stiff, it has three sections in the string that it has to pull up. By giving it a good hard whack, I'm actually equalizing the tension between those three sections. Therefore, the piano will stay in tune for longer. Now that I've tuned my circle of fifths, I can then now expand that temperament, which I've tuned in the middle section, up and down the piano. And I'm using various intervals to check my work as I'm going up and down. Probably the most difficult piano I've, I've, I've had to tune was when I tuned in Janolan Caves in the Grand Arch because there was about 10 different echoes coming through and the birds chirping, so that made it quite difficult. It does help in certain circumstances to be able to play as a piano tuner, although it's not absolutely necessary. The advantage is that if you have a pianist who has a problem with the piano and they want to demonstrate it to you, it's easier if you can sit down and also feel what they're feeling. Piano tuning is an art because it combines the art of music with the mechanical features of the instrument. Don't forget to check out more videos in the ABC Classic Piano series.